develop pi or construct to estimate pi, we're at 10.2a. That means we have four previous videos for chapter 10, and if you go to the description, you'll see links to the geometry playlist. The ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter is defined as pi, and all circles are similar, so this ratio is the same for all circles. Pi is equal to the quotient of the circumference and the diameter. So here's what we're going to need. We can use construction and measurement to develop pi. We need cardboard or poster board. We need a compass, a measuring tape, scissors, and a straight edge. We're going to be cutting out a circle on the cardboard or poster board using our compass. And if you don't have those handy, we can use a plastic lid in place of the cardboard and the scissors and the compass. So the first thing we're going to do is use our compass to draw a large circle on a piece of cardboard or poster board and cut it out. The next thing we do is use a measuring tape to accurately and carefully measure the diameter, so that's the distance from side to side, and the circumference all the way around. If you don't have a measuring tape, you can measure the circumference with a piece of string or ribbon. So just take a piece of string and go very carefully around the edge one time, mark the string, and then measure the string on a ruler or whatever you've got to measure. So my diameter was 10.5 centimeters going across, and my circumference was about 33.5 centimeters. The measuring tape was a little stiff, and it was about as accurate as I could get. Now we use the results from our circle to estimate pi. So remember, pi is the quotient of the circumference and diameter, so it's c divided by d. And my circumference was 33.5, my diameter was 10.5, I do the division, and because we're using pi, I use an approximate symbol, and it came out about 3.19, and the digits went on. So I was close because pi is approximately 3.14, and these are the first 500 digits of pi. Look at this, it keeps going on and on and on. So we use 3.14 in an approximation symbol because we're not being exact. So my measuring wasn't accurate. It was close though, I got 3.19. Can we draw a circle whose ratio of circumference to diameter is not pi? No, all circles are similar, so the ratio will always be the same. Pi will always equal the quotient of the circumference and diameter. By knowing the relationship between circumference, diameter, and pi, we can determine the formula to solve for circumference. So we know pi is equal to the quotient of the circumference and the diameter. If we multiply both sides by d, this denominator, we can eliminate the d on the right side as a 1, and we get pi times the diameter is going to equal the circumference. Knowing pi is approximately 3.14, we can use a piece of ribbon to make a pi measuring tape in inches or centimeters. So I did it in inches. And we can use our pi measuring tape to find the diameter of a sphere, like a ball. So what I did was I took a ruler and the ribbon, and I measured 3.14 inches, and I marked it as pi. And this is an approximation because we don't have all the digits of pi. I marked another 3.14 inches and marked it as 2 pi. I did it again and marked it as 3 pi, and I kept going. So I used my pi measuring tape to measure my Scooby-Doo ball, and it measured as 5 pi over here when I wrapped the ribbon around the circumference of the ball. This means the diameter is 5. If the circumference is n pi, the diameter is n. So whatever the number on my pi measuring tape comes out as, even if it was 7.75 pi, I know that the diameter is 7.75. See? Archimedes used inscribed and circumscribed polygons to estimate the value of pi. His method of exhaustion is considered to be an early version of calculus. So we can estimate pi if the circumference of the circle is less than the perimeter, 
of the larger polygon and greater than the perimeter of the smaller polygon. So the first thing we do is construct a large square with perpendicular bisectors of two adjacent sides. So here's a perpendicular bisector for this side, and here's a perpendicular bisector for this side, and we use our compass to draw an inscribed circle. Put your compass at the very center here and draw an inscribed circle, a circle that's inside of your square. Now we take a straight edge and connect the midpoints from here to here to here to here to here and we form a square that is inscribed in the circle. I'm going to let P sub 1 be the perimeter of this smaller square. We're going to let P sub 2 be the perimeter of the larger square. And of course, C is equal to the circumference of the circle. Now we can measure the squares. The perimeter of the smaller square, it has four sides. Each side is 8 centimeters. We have 4 times 8, which is 32 centimeters for the perimeter of P sub 1. The larger square has four sides, and each side is 12 centimeters, so we have 48 centimeters for its perimeter. We can write an equality. C, the circumference, is greater than P sub 1 and less than P sub 2. Now, we know pi times the diameter is going to equal the circumference, and our diameter is 12. 3.14 times 12 is approximately 37.68, so now we can divide each expression in the inequality by the diameter of the circle, that 12 centimeters. So we had 32 centimeters for P sub 1, we had 48 centimeters for P sub 2, and we found that the circumference was 37.68. We divide each by 12, that diameter, and we get 2.67 for P sub 1. We have our 3.14 for pi, and we have 4 for P sub 2. So 3.14 is greater than 2.67 and less than 4. And this gives us an inequality in terms of pi because the second inequality values are closer together. These values are closer together. And with more sides, the values would be even closer together. It takes a little more than three diameters to go around a circle. So the circumference is about three diameters. And it takes a little more than six radii to go around a circle. So the circumference is about six radii. So the diameter goes all the way across, and the radius goes from the center point to the side. So it's halfway. So two radii makes one diameter, doesn't it? And pi is approximately 3.14. And if we multiply that by the diameter, we get the circumference. So about three diameters, 3.14 diameters, makes the circumference. And because the radius of a circle is half the length of the diameter, the circumference of the circle can be found with C for circumference equals 2 times the radius times pi, or you'll see it as 2 pi r. If we're given the radius, we can use it to find the area of a circle. The area would equal pi times the radius squared. And if we're given the diameter, we can divide it by 2 to get the radius, then the area. So if we need the radius and we only have the diameter, we can just divide that by 2 to get the radius and then square it. So if our diameter is 8 centimeters, then our radius is 4 centimeters. So pi helps us find the circumference and area of a circle. The circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, and circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. The area is equal to pi r squared, and it's also equal to pi times half the diameter squared. We're going to talk about circumference and area of a circle in the second part of this lesson. That'll be 10.2b. Then we're going to do the third part of the lesson with area of a regular polygon. So I hope you understand the relationship between the circumference, the diameter, and pi. And I hope I'll see you in the second part of this lesson. Have a great day. Bye.